Hey, it's Brody with Better Outfitters, and over the course of the next few weeks, uh, we're going to be doing a little bit of in-depth videos going over different parts of uh, conversion camper vans and some of the just different aspects of make them the, between your luxury camper vans and some of the more like rugged adventure camper vans that we've got. Um, show you some of the differences, the key features that kind of people look for, and even if you're an avid camper uh, that's already had experience with vans or somebody just getting started into it and trying to figure out what they're wanting to do with them, uh, we're going to hope that this video kind of at least gives you some new information and maybe something you can take away from it. Um, after this video, if you got any questions or anything regarding vans that you want to see in the next few weeks, uh, drop them down in the comments below and we'll try and answer those questions while we're going over these different things. Some of the main things we're going to be going over in this video series is going to be two different vans, some of the key features that kind of make them different from brand to brand. We, uh, we carry usually the Fords, the Mercedes, or the Chevys. Um, kind of explaining the differences of that, but we're also going to hit on like the Promaster or even some of the Nissan vans and stuff like that too. One thing we're going to kind of help y'all try and understand is some of the different layouts and why you would do certain ones, kind of like the one that we're doing this video in right now. It's kind of more of the uh, rear dinette, a little bit more room in it for hanging out. So we'll be going over the different layouts, uh, kind of comparing the different interior layouts between all these to kind of help you understand and figure out what style of camping you even like to do or whenever you're kind of using your van for 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 living in or uh, just traveling around and having whatever convenience factors you might like and want to have with it. One of the main things with us at Better Outfitters that we like to do is we like to at least have a few different vans on the lot um, for different layouts. So if you're wanting to get one pretty fast, you can come buy one off the lot. If you just want to check one out before you even place an order, um, we tend to like to have uh, many different options so you can be able to check them out. If you're not in our area, and we're not going to be at a show that you might be at. On our website, we do have a, a new list of all the cool little van expos and meetups and stuff like that going on over the course of this next year. Um, so you'd be able to go put your hands on, see some vans, and get to see if that's something that you might want to be interested in. Uh, it's always good just to be able to compare different layouts, um, differences between the pop-top conversions, like what we tend to have on our lot for your multi-family kind of multiple people camping and sleeping, or your ones that are set up more for just two people with a bed set up in them. So this first part that we're going to be going over is going to be kind of understanding your camping conversion vans and some of the different aspects of them, whether you're looking for the ones that are more fully loaded with all the little gadgets and features, um, or you're looking for something that's going to be a little bit more rugged and get you into that little more beaten path a little bit further. Um, kind of like the Chevy, it's going to be more of your aggressive, lower height so you can get in through more brush, stuff like that a little bit easier, it got a little bit higher clearance, um, manual locking in four wheel drive so you really got that ease of mind knowing that you got your four low or your four high to be able to get really get back into some pretty good country and get away from some people. With like some of these bigger ones that they've got a little bit more uh, space, height, room, you get a little bit more storage options, you also could have the possibility for uh, adding a shower or a bathroom in them. Um, they all are going to have, for the most part, going to have at least some type of refrigerator set up or a uh, sink, uh, little stove style set up. And then, like I mentioned, depending on what size is really going to dictate on how much storage space you get. Um, one of the nice things with all the brands of vans that we carry and some of the uh, companies that we can order from is that we get the accessories to be able to add onto the back like your racks and your storage boxes so that gives you a little bit more uh, space to kind of keep all the things that you might need out on the trails. Some of the other key things to think about whenever you're looking at vans is going to be uh, whether you're going to be living in one full time or just doing little weekend getaways, uh, whether that be with yourself or uh, having your kids with you as well, finding the right brand that's going to have uh, enough seating or uh, have the bed kind of layout that you might want or have the water capacity that you might want for those extended trips versus if you're going to be living in one you might want a little bit different features things like that to be more capable of kind of self-sustaining for uh, very extended periods of time obviously. So as I mentioned it's kind of the main brands that we tend to carry are going to be your Fords, your Chevys or your Mercedes. Um, with your Mercedes you're going to usually get more of your bells and whistles uh, kind of with that just because that's what they are that's what they're known for. Um, with the Chevys, they're going to be that smaller profile, more power, having the big V8 in them, uh, being able to tow stuff easier with it if you're wanting to haul a little trailer behind you. Um, and like I said, you can just get a little bit deeper and further off with them. Um, and then with your Fords, 
Uh, I got really nice features. They can be almost as many options, if not more than some of the Mercedes, but add a little bit more bang for your buck. Uh, I think the Fords are a really good option to get um, versus if you're getting the low roof, the mid roof or the high roof, they're all gonna be good. But things to consider with that is gonna be, uh, if you're used to the driving um, of something that size to getting used to it, um, if you're in a place that's really windy, you might want to go with kind of a smaller van versus a real big one, so you're not getting that kind of wind push on you all the time. And then one thing with between your lows, your mids, or your high roofs is going to be if you're trying to fit it in a garage or uh, in a storage space and trying to keep that into consideration. Um, and that'll also dictate what size lift if you want to put one on one or if not. With the uh, pop top vans like we have, they do have a little bit more height on the top of them than most would. Uh, even when they're closed just for that extra space for your bedding and things like that. And so that's something to kind of keep in mind. If you're going to be going with uh, a low roof Ford or a Mercedes, it's pretty handy to have that pop top roof on the top, even if you're not going to be using that extra bed space, just so whenever you are set up at camp, you can pop that roof up, move the kind of bed sections out of the way and have plenty of walking around kind of space inside of it. So you're not just having to be hunched over the whole time. Um, and so, even like I mentioned, if you're not doing the family style camp and needing two beds, if you're getting a low roof version or even on the Chevys, it's pretty nice to have that pop top conversion set up on them. I'm Hunter Hanner. I'm one of the owners of BTR Outfitters. I know you guys are more used to seeing Brody doing these videos, but I wanted to talk a little bit today about our vans that we carry and some of why I've got good first-hand experience with that is me, my wife, and my four kids, we really enjoy the outdoors. We like going camping and we like going camping in places that you can't necessarily get to with a normal RV. And so as our family has grown, kind of our camping rigs have changed, but we went down the rabbit hole about three years ago. We started trying to figure out what would be the best solution now we've got four kids. We want to still be able to get off the grid, go camp in the national forest and see some of the cool places in this country. And as we got looking, it was like, okay, we've got to be able to seat everybody. We've got to be able to sleep everybody getting there. We don't really want to take two vehicles. And a lot of times we're taking, we've got kayaks that we like to kayak or we like to mountain bike and we like to backpack. And so a lot of times we're carrying a trailer with kayaks or bikes and that kind of stuff. And so as we got looking, it's like, man, I think a van would work because we can all, we can figure out where we can all sit. We can figure out where we all sleep. But then it also gives us the ability to hook up a trailer. We can haul all the toys and stuff we want to haul and get it there to have fun once we get to the campsite, but we still only have to take one vehicle. And with the big family, that's kind of, it gets complicated because a lot of times we're like, oh, we're going to have to take two cars. We got to take the pickup to put all the stuff in the back. And then we got to take this and pull the camper with this rig. But the van has worked really well. We've loved it. And I want to show you today because some of the stuff that we had to go through is we were figuring out how do we lay out this van because a van is a big purchase. So you want to get it right when you're ordering your van, picking out your van, and the layout was important, some of the options were important, but I just wanna go over some of the things today and we'll probably get in some of these vans, show you some of the different options for layouts, what the pros and cons are, storage things you have to think of, cooking things you have to think of, and then even some of the nitty gritty stuff like, okay, how much battery do I need and how am I gonna use this van? Where are we planning to go? but we'll get in some of these vans and I'll show you around and we'll start talking about some of that stuff. This is our Chevy Express van and the Chevy Express vans are really cool. That's actually what ours is. I really like them because you still got, they're a full truck. You've got the truck frame, you've got all the towing capabilities, you've got the big V8 motor and with the Quigley conversions, you've got the true four wheel drive. But as we step into this one, it's got the sofa bed layout in it, and so we'll talk about some of the pros and cons of who that layout works best for. That's actually the one we've got because it's got a lot of seating, as you'll see. But let's step inside and we'll look at this van. Uh, 
Okay, we're inside the Chevy. So this is one, this is kind of a classic camper van layout. This is, I've seen it called an EB50. I think that comes from Sportsmobile World when they used to do a lot of the old Ford Econoline vans. But you've seen this layout similar. I mean, obviously nicer, newer seats and some of the new conversions like this seat. But you've got the van, you've got a big galley, and then in the back, you've got this, we call it a sofa bed. And this layout works really well because you have lots of storage. As you can see down the side, I mean, you've got these big areas here. And this, this, is, the, this is a very similar layout to what my personal van is. But we use these back ones as kind of closets. So we'll put our clothes and stuff in this area, but you've got lots of storage. I mean, we can fit, we camp six of us and we go camp for, oh, we normally don't go for more than four or five days, but we can get all of our clothes for everybody in these back, back to closet areas and even stuff some stuff like bedding and some of that as well. But then, You've got a nice comfortable seat back here that's shaped. I mean, this is not your old flat sofa. Seat belts, everything. You're perfectly legal with kids running down the highway. Feel safe. But then you get to camp and this thing flips and folds and makes a bed. And the way that we've designed ours is you've got this two seats here and then you've got this big long pad down the side underneath the pad you'll see some hidden storage and that's where some of your stuff like your batteries is and it's really cool how they figure out where to put all the stuff in these vans because you've got a limited amount of space but you're able to have a big battery bank but what's neat is when you flip this seat down into a bed the bed is not as wide as the seat now the bed is the same height as this cushion so you've got a bed that's from this wide all the way to the wall. And so you can sleep easily. Me and my wife and ours, we sleep down below. We have the bottom bed. And then what's awesome with the pop top vans that we stock is this whole upper area in this Chevy van is literally can be made into one big bed. So we've got all four kids pile up there and we've also used it like when we're camping, we've been camping before and it starts raining really hard. And okay, go back to the camper. We're not wanting to be outside and get soaked. Well, that bed's big enough and the roof raises up tall enough. I'm about six feet tall. I can get up there, sit Indian style, sit however I want. And I've got plenty of headroom and we play cards. It's like the living room if we're hunkered down in the van and happen to spend a few hours and play cards, play board games, do that kind of stuff. We just go up top, so it's kind of a bonus room as well. But these panels also in the Chevy, what we'll do all the way back to that back one, these are all movable, removable. And so what we'll do traveling is we'll stack these on top of each other, and that gives you a lot like my wife she's about five five she can stand up next to the galley and not hit her head i still have to squat a little bit but it gives you a whole lot more headroom okay so here i am standing up this is with the panels removed and like i said you can remove the panels all the way to the back and the chevy van you can actually stack them because this top is a little taller than some of the other vans and so you can move them and stack them we stack at least this one and sometimes even that one will stack but if you stack this one you can see it's six feet i can't stand all the way up but i mean i just barely have to bend my knees i'm pretty comfortable and if you move this one i've got the whole galley area so getting ready in the morning any of that stuff i've got this whole space that i'm not having to because the difference of this Versus if I got the panel, this is not a comfortable long period of time stance. So it is nice that they make it where you can move these panels. But 
the Chevy van, you cannot get the higher roof. So this is the roof height you get. Thankfully with the pop top and the panel removed, it's doable, but there is definitely some pros to having like a mid roof Ford. That's kind of the lowest height van that at six foot I can completely stand up. And then if you get into the high roof vans, you got tons of roof height. Yes, I really like this layout because you've got the good seating. It lays down into a nice bed. And then behind the seat, you have a ton of space still that we'll keep like our camp kitchen. We'll take our solo stove at times. We've got backpacks, all the gear, you just pile it behind the back seat. And so you still got all that storage as well. I'd like to talk about the galley too, because that's one of the perks of this floor plan as well, is you've got a really big galley with lots of drawers, lots of cabinet space. You've got plenty of room for a big fridge. That's the same fridge we've got in ours. And I mean, we seldom take a cooler on top of the fridge because we can fit all the, the food and that kind of stuff that we know has to stay cold. We keep in the fridge and then drink wise, we do everything from, oh, we've got one of those, they hold five gallons of water and they filter the waters it comes out. I cannot think of the brand of it, but we can look that up for y'all and put it in the video, but it's really handy. And the other thing we've got mounted on the back of ours, the big, and this van is set up for it as well. On the back, we've got one of the big aluminum storage boxes. And that's where you would keep more of like the stuff that's dirty and that you don't want inside the van. And it blows my mind how much stuff you can fit in one of those big aluminum boxes. And then the boxes are set up where you can actually put a jerry can holder on it. And that's where we'll carry the extra drinking water and that kind of stuff if we're going off grid for several days. But I mean, these galleys you do, you've got plenty of countertop space. You've got a nice sink. We do them with the induction burner and we like the induction burner because it keeps the system all electric. You don't have to worry about having a propane system built into the van just for a cooktop essentially because the heater in these is running all off of the, it's pulling the fuel out of the fuel tank of the vehicle. So it's all tied in. Those are very, very efficient. Don't use hardly any fuel, but that induction cooktop keeps it all electric, but it also keeps the countertop nice and flat. So if you're doing meal prep and stuff, and I will be the first to say, we do most of our cooking outside. We have a camp kitchen. We use a partner stove that folds up so it doesn't take up much room in the van. And we set up kind of the cooking outside under the awning and one you're outside and that's where you want to be if you're camping two if I'm cooking burgers or something that's smoky I don't get all the smoke in the van so but these galleys are completely adequate to cook if you needed to cook inside the van and they're laid out very nice for meal prep even the countertop space is so valuable in a van for brushing your teeth in the morning storing your everyone's got their little bag with their toothbrush and their razors and any of the stuff that my wife will have laid out and she's very organized and that's one of the things i would stress as you're kicking around your van is i mean storage is there's only so much in a van but what's cool and we sell some cool products in the store. I mean, Step 22 makes some really cool stuff. Front Runner makes some cool stuff. But they design things that keep you organized in small spaces. And so you, everything has its spot and it's designed to roll up or fold up where it takes up very little space. And so you have to think through like how many people am I going to be taking on a regular basis? Everybody kind of has to have their spot to keep their stuff. Everything needs to have a home to stay organized. And then you start finding the stuff that's designed for the overland camping, for the van camping that 
it does the same job as a big item, but it packs up a lot smaller. Therefore, you can fit more of it in these cabinet spaces that you have in these vans. But I want to go show you some different layouts because, like I said, I know this one very well because I have spent lots of nights camping in a van very similar to this. But we have some other different options for people that may value more. I want, I want a table, a, a space to eat inside the van because that is one thing this van doesn't really have. This, these vans, if you're eating inside the van, we've done it but everyone's sitting somewhere like this and you've got your plate in your lap because there's not really a table for everyone to gather around. But there are layouts that are designed for that. There's layouts that are designed for, I may not need as much seating space, but I want more storage space to take more gear with me. Well, we've got platform bed layouts that are designed that way. So We'll go look at one of our Ford vans next that's laid out with that dinette and show you some of the pros and cons of that layout. So this is the Ford midroof van. It's in stock and this one's got the dinette area I was talking about. So if someone that's wanting, needing more of that space where, hey, we can sit, we've got a table to play cards at, eat at, inside the van, this is that layout. Okay, so we're inside the Ford. This is a midroof transit and this has more of the dinette layout in the back and one of the things as you'll notice immediately is okay we've got a dinette in the back but where do the people sit in this thing because we're designing our vans with the pop tops where you can always sleep more people and seat more people than two people because a lot of the class b camper van stuff in the industry that's how it's designed. It's designed for a driver and a passenger up front and they got a bed in the back, but it's a two people rig. Well, we like to go camping with friends and family, so we want to be able to take more people. So the seating in this one, you've got the extra seats are in front of the galley. So they're right directly behind the driver and passenger. Still forward facing with the good seat belt. So no safety concerns there, but that, makes it and the beauty of this van too as you can see is this is a midroof and like i said i'm about six feet tall and i can just stand up even with a hat on and i'm just barely grazing it so you can stand up in this one versus the chevy van this layout if it was somebody that it's like man we want we're, we're going to probably spend more time in our van while we're camping we're still obviously going camping to be outside and stuff, but there's times it's hot outside in Texas or it's really cold. We, we go snow skiing in our van a lot and we need to be able to hang out in the van more. This is a great layout for that because you've got this table with seating all the way around it. It looks like the table's really low, but that's because the cushions are squishy. So you can sit all the way around it. It's the right height for playing games, for eating at. But this table drops down and converts this whole back area into a bed as well. So you've got a two person bed down here. And then once again, you have the huge pop top bed, bonus room, all that stuff up top that you can sleep if it's kids you can sleep way more than people up there but two adults easily and kids at least three and this one is set up actually has a cool little feature because the chevy van with that uh sofa layout there's nowhere really to build in a porta potty and so this one this is our cool little you want to show them how that works so you got your little hidden porta potty. Nothing fancy, but gets gets the job done for camping. No one really likes staring at a toilet all the time, so this is a fun spot to hide the toilet. And I mean, talking about toilets and camper vans and overlanding, backcountry camping, adventure camping, whatever you want to call it my thoughts on and this is my thoughts this is from my experience but my thoughts on a toilet that's kind of we have one in our van even though it's not built in 
we keep it between the front two seats when we're traveling. Ours is actually one of the wrap-on toilets. I, I think that's how you pronounce it, but it's the ones that's a dry flush that it actually is the plastic bag and then you find a trash can and you throw it away. It's kind of weird the first time, but it we like it because there's no smell, none of that. And you could put something like that in here. So you can kind of pick and choose. They come with the standard porta potty, but if you wanted to wrap on or something like that, it would fit in the same space. But ours is used, I mean, if you're camping way back, in the middle of nowhere where no one else is around which is what we like to do a lot of times then a lot of times we will choose to use the restroom outside the camper to keep all of that outside the camper and then if we're camping in a campground we a lot of times will use the camp showers camp bathrooms that kind of stuff it's nice to have for like the emergency situations ours doesn't get used a ton but it is nice to have now there's some people that and we've got those options too and we will show you one next in another van but there's some people that want a full bathroom shower area in the van and i get that and everyone's different but we grew up camping out in the woods hunting fishing all that stuff so even my wife and my daughter if you have to go find a tree and do your business but keep it outside of the van as much as possible that's how we do it but these do have, this one's nice because it's hidden, it's out of sight. Then underneath where I'm sitting, there, this is another where how they creatively cram everything in these vans, but this van in particular has a big battery system. So it's got 600 amp hours worth of battery in it. And what that, and, and, and you don't have to get that. Like you may, as you're deciding on your van, you may decide, look, I don't need, because batteries are expensive. The lithium batteries, the 12 volt power systems, all of that stuff is where some of the costs can really start adding up. But this big battery bank, these have a 12 volt AC on them. And we're in Texas, so we get some heat. It's very hot right now. And that enables you if you're off grid you can turn that ac on hey we're going to bed i want to cool it off a little bit uh, and get the temperature down you can actually run that ac off the battery for an extended period of time whereas if you did not have that big battery bank you turn that ac on and these are very efficient ac systems being 12 volt but you would still it would be just a few hours that you'd be able to run it so that's decisions you have to make okay but all of that i've got battery systems i've got the water heater systems all of that is stored in these storage compartments there's still some you could cram some stuff like camp chairs rumple blankets that kind of stuff you could still get some of that stuff in there around it but there is stuff in the storage because this one's got the big batteries and some of that that take up some space so one of the things you do give up inside in this layout, like, man, yeah, we've got all the room in the world to eat and hang out back here. But versus that Chevy that we looked at before that had all that storage down this wall, you're going to give up some interior storage with this layout. Now you've still got the full galley. You've got the induction cooktop, the sink, the same big fridge. You've got some storage cabinets under the sink, but you do give up some drawers you give up that big closet but on this ford what we've done is you can kind of see it through the window i don't know if you'll both see it on the video but this has a system mounted on the back where instead of where i was talking about how much stuff you can put in one of those aluminum boxes this one's got the ability to not mount not just one of those boxes but you could actually mount two of those boxes so you could keep a you can still get it to camp with you, just more of your storage is going to be on the outside of the van versus the inside of the van. But yeah, this is this is a really, I mean, if it's someone, like I said, if you're in those extreme temperatures, extreme heat, extreme cold, you're knowing I'm going to be spending some more time in the van. This is a great layout for, I want to be able to have a comfortable space to eat, play, hang out in the van you've got more of that in this layout versus that sofa bed 
And then the last van that we're going to show you, it's a big van. It's a Mercedes, it's a 170 high roof. So that's the big long Mercedes with the tallest roof. But with that big van, you've got a big interior that you can put a lot of stuff in. It is set up with the platform bed. So it's got lots of room to take stuff. And then it actually has the bathroom as well. So we'll move to that van and show you that one. And then those are going to really be probably the three most popular type layouts. You're either going to have a sofa bed in the back, you're going to have a dinette area like this, or you're going to have the platform bed. And we try and keep all of those in stock, knowing those are the most popular floor plans and they fit different needs and have different pros and cons. But we'll move to that Mercedes now and show you that last platform bed layout. Okay, now we're at the Mercedes. And like I said, this is a 170 Mercedes high roof. So this is about the biggest, I think it is the biggest van chassis currently on the market as far as how much interior space you have to work with. So let's take a look inside this one. Okay, we're inside the Mercedes. So as you can see, it's got plenty of room even with the hat on I think you could be I mean six three six four in this van and not having to squat at all and so tons of roof height we've still got the pop top with the big bed up top but we've got a lot of room to work with we've done this one is got the platform bed layout but we've still got because we want to go with friends and family. So we've still got our extra seating. So you got your driver and passenger, but our co-pilot seats are up front here behind the driver and passenger. This one's got two. You can make it three if you needed a three, an extra seat in here easily. And then from there, this is the unique thing that we've done with this bigger bigger floor space to work with but this one has the built-in shower area so you have a full shower you're not using the camp showers you're not using because like and I didn't talk about that like the Chevy the Ford they're all gonna have a shower but it is at the back of the van so you open up the back doors you've got the shower spigot you've got the hose like this but you're showering outside the van this one You've got someone in your crew that, nope, I do not want to use camp showers. I do not want to shower outside. This one, you've got that comfort and convenience of having a full shower inside the van. And then we've also got a porta potty. And what a lot of people do is they'll keep the porta potty in there as well. And so you have your private area if you need to use the restroom. Obvious advantages to having the shower in the van. You've got your own private bathroom area. The negative to having the shower in the van is that took six plus feet of height and however wide that is of space that could be used for other things. So that's where you have to prioritize what is most important to me when I am picking out the layout of my van. Do I value this shower enough? which there's a lot of people that do. And, but do I value that enough that I want to give up that storage space, that cabinet space, other things you could use this area for? Now, as you'll see, and one of the reasons why if you want to shower, a 170 Sprinter is a great option. This one has the shower. It still seats four people, sleeps four people easily. Like I said, the bed up top, you can sleep more than four, if you, two kids if you need to sleep, kids up top. But because it's such a big floor plan and a big van, it still has a ton of storage space. I mean, so, I mean, the next thing you've got this galley and I would say this galley is as big as what's in that Chevy van. And one of the pros of that Chevy layout with the sofa bed is you get a big galley with all the cabinets and storage underneath this one, you've got that much real estate up top with your sink and your induction cooktop. But because you've got this shower on this side, they put the fridge over here. It fit because of depth. So you got the same size fridge here. But by not having the fridge underneath the galley, you've got tons of 
storage space. You've got cabinets, you've got drawers, and you've got more cabinets above the fridge, and you've got a cabinet below the fridge. This is a big van. This would be an awesome van for doing big, long excursions that you need to take a lot of stuff. Or if you're that person that I just like a few more comforts and conveniences when I go camping, whereas we have to be very organized and pick and choose what goes with us. This one, I think you could take it all. You can bring everything you could possibly dream of, keep your van stocked up, ready to rock, where when you're ready to go, you're throwing food in the fridge, grabbing your clothes, putting them in their spot, and you're out of here. But this one, you could keep a lot of stuff in. You've got cabinets because of the extra height. You've got the ability to put cabinets up here. This one even has a microwave because you've got the space for a microwave. So this is a very, very nice, comfortable van, but it is still a very capable van because this is the Mercedes. This is the last year model. We snagged it. That is a true four wheel drive Mercedes, not an all wheel drive. And this one's still got the six cylinder diesel that's just been proven and proven and proven to be such a great motor longevity wise. So you've got a true four wheel drive van, diesel motor, very fuel efficient for how big this thing is. So you can still go where you can get way back in there. Now your, your size, you're a little longer, you're a little taller. So you got to make sure you're not scraping tree limbs and stuff but it's set up to get way back in there. It's just going to be a more comfortable camping experience because it's so big. The bed layout on this one, another very popular option, but I'm going to jump up there. So this is what they call a platform bed. So it's the other two vans, you're converting the back bed. So one of them is a sofa where people are sleeping or sitting as you're traveling, you get to camp, you make it down into the bed. The dinette one, it's your sitting area with your table, all of that. You get ready to sleep, you make it down to bed. This one's a bed all the time. So some of that, I don't want to be moving the seat up and down. I don't want to be taking the dinette up and down. This one, simple, easy. It's a very large bed because it's side to side i mean i think i could i know i can sleep long ways very easily and i'm pretty sure i could sleep sideways so easy two-person bed probably could be two person and a kid bed if you have that kid that doesn't that wants to sleep closer to mom and dad the younger kid but big bed and then underneath We've got what they call a garage. And this one's actually got, we may have to shoot it from the back, but this one's got a slide. So, cause I mean, you're talking feet of depth here of storage underneath. And so reaching from the back, most people's arms aren't six feet long. So this one's got a slide built in so you can keep all your gear underneath there and slide it out. But these ones with the garages, you'll see people that will put mountain bikes underneath, but you could fit hiking gear. I mean, you can take a lot of stuff in this van. So fishing, hunting, hiking, biking, you name it. You've got a built-in garage underneath this bed that you can take the toys and stuff with you. But big, big floor plan with on this 170. So you've got lots of room to work with. You've got the conveniences of a shower. You've got tons of cabinet space in here. And then you have this garage area underneath. So really, I would say the only negatives to like this floor plan with this platform bed is that you do give up. There's still not like where that dinette one, you've got the interior space to hang out it's designed, okay, we don't want to be outside. We want to be in the van and having space to sit around the table, eat, be merry, all of those things. You don't have that eating space, that designated hangout space in here. You do have the pop top. And like I said, that's kind of how we use our pop top is we'll go up there, 
but you give up having a table in here but other than that I mean you've got the biggest bed down below you've got a shower you've got cabinet space you just don't have a table and because your van is just longer and a bigger footprint it there's definitely places you could get with like the Chevy versus this van just because of the sheer size of the van. Well, I hope I've been helpful today talking through some, I mean, like I said, these are three of the most popular layouts in camper vans, but it's a big decision. You've got to prioritize, I mean, money we know is not unlimited. And so there's certain things you gotta weigh the cost of. You gotta weigh the cost of how many people does it need to see, sleep? How much storage space do I need? What do I value the most with the storage space I've got? But I do, I hope I've been helpful kind of explaining the pros and cons of some of these layouts. We're gonna have some more stuff coming up on the van, so stay tuned for the next part of this series. And if you got any questions, you know where to find us. Go to our website, btroutfitters.com, and you can reach out to Brody, Daniel, any of the team, and we'd be glad to help you. Hey guys, this is Daniel. I'm the shop foreman here at Better Outfitters. Today we're going to be talking about a crucial part of your van purchasing. Your crucial part of your van is going to be your drivetrain. Let's break it down and talk about each individual motor and transmission combo between the Mercedes, the Chevy, and our Ford. We're going to start with the Chevy. The Chevy runs, this particular one, is a 6.6 .6 liter gas. It's also backed up with a six-speed transmission. So when you're deciding what you're gonna do with your camper van, if you're looking at towing or looking at doing intense off-road, or if you're looking at just driving down the highway, this is a crucial part that you have to look at in order to pick out the right van. The Chevy van, for instance, with the 6.6 gas, is actually a great towing vehicle as well as a great off-road vehicle. With that in mind though, when you look at towing and off-road, you gotta look at, you're gonna lose a little bit of miles per gallon. It has a lot of power, has a lot of low end torque. It can get you through those rough, rocky edge roads, up the side of mountains, through creeks, but it can also pull your boat, other little cargo trailers, accessory trailers, without even thinking about it. It's an excellent vehicle for an all around, I'm gonna do everything I can overland. All right guys, so we've talked about the Chevy. We've talked about its benefits. Let's move on to the Ford over here and we'll discuss it. All right, now that we're at our Ford over here, the Transit, its powertrain is a 3.5 liter turbo gas motor. It comes with a 10 speed transmission. There's other options. This is gonna be more of cram your gear in it. Let's hit the highway. It's gonna perform great driving down the highway, but because of its length, its height and the smaller engine, you're not gonna be able to take this thing where that Chevy will go. It's not gonna go up mountains and through rivers. It is all wheel drive. So there is some things you can do there. Beneficial would be bad weather situations you could get in and out of a little easier. Uh, the biggest thing on this is its payload is already taken up by the majority of the build on your van. So pulling a trailer, things like that, you can still do, but you're not gonna be able to hook your boat on a big cargo trailer or anything like that. It's gonna have to be a smaller utility style trailer. Your miles per gallon on this though is extremely better than the Chevy. It, I don't wanna give you details. I don't wanna lie to you. Estimated between probably 15 to 18. So compared to the Chevy, it's gonna be five to 10 miles per gallon better but you're limited on your time and your space of where you can travel. All right, we've discussed the Ford. We've discussed the Chevy. The only thing left is our Mercedes. Let's go over there and check it out now. All right, guys, we're over here at the Mercedes now. Mercedes runs in this particular model a 3.0 liter diesel. Now with the diesel, you get into a whole nother world than gas. It's not just as easy as pull up to the gas station, pour some diesel in it and take off. You actually have dev fluid. Your maintenance on a diesel is more expensive than a gas motor. Your oil changes are a little bit more. You have more filters because there's other fuel filters and things. You also have the dev fluid. 
but your diesels have a completely different power system. So these motors will out, they'll perform a little higher in some ways and a little lower in others. This van right here is set up to be your all around van. It can tow, it can climb, and it's gonna get fairly decent fuel mileage because of the diesel aspect. Lovely West Texas weather, we're starting to get rained on. So we're gonna jump inside and we're gonna finish it out inside. All right, guys, we're in our Mercedes here. Beautiful interior, but we're still talking about motors and transmissions and maintenance, 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 maintenance. So you've seen a Mercedes, you've seen a Ford, and you've seen a Chevy. Ford and Chevy have multiple places you can take them to get maintenance and service work done. Mercedes, not so much. You've got dealerships, which is my recommended go-to for any maintenance or service work. When you look at your dealerships for maintenance on a Mercedes, they're far apart. You look at your dealerships for Chevys and Fords, they're everywhere. So there's another aside to look at. Also, considering this is a diesel, even if the other two were diesels, your maintenance is gonna be a little bit more expensive. Chevy's maintenance on a diesel, a little, I, I can't give you exact prices, but it's a little bit higher than their gas. Ford's the same way. The Mercedes, however, you're sticking a Mercedes name on it, but you get the dependability of the Mercedes. They stand behind their motors. Their motors are in numerous makes and models of vehicles all over the world. So just some things to kind of keep in mind when you're looking at motors, transmissions, things along those lines. Another thing to keep in mind, this isn't a, a cheap purchase. This You're looking at a expensive, reliable purchase when you're looking at all these. Mileage. A diesel motor usually will handle more miles than a gas motor. In my personal opinion, Ford, Chevy, Dodge, Mercedes, all these motors are built to make, to make the mileage. If you take care of them and you do your maintenance, they will last. Let's talk about driving one of these. So your car or pickup, whatever you drive, it's small, smaller, I should say, not a big wall. If you look at these, the sides of these are tall, they're wide, they're long. So when you're looking at purchasing one, think about what you are comfortable with driving. Not what you think you can drive, but what you're comfortable with. Go test drive them, that is crucial. If you don't know what you're driving, you don't wanna purchase it. Our Ford van that we looked at earlier, it has a huge high roof, which is awesome, just like this one. I'm standing here, I'm six foot one, and I'm not touching my head, that's amazing. But the other side to that is wind. It's not going to be a layback, relax, like you're driving your, your Tahoe, your Chevy pickup, your Ford F-150. You're going to have to hold on to that wheel and keep that, keep that van on the road. Uh, the Chevy van, I'll tell you right now, I've personally driven one. Thing drives like a dream. But it's short. It's squatty. There's not a big wall on the side to catch air. So it drives just like a regular F-150 or Dodge pickup, whatever you may drive. The Mercedes, it's the same kind of as the Ford, but they sit up higher. So they're a little top heavy. So you can feel it sway. Nothing's unsafe about it. It's just you have to be comfortable with your driving. And if you're not comfortable driving a monster, a smaller one, they make low top Fords, they make shorter Fords, they make mid top Fords. Same with Mercedes. Chevy, Chevy's across the board. It's the same van. Sorry about you. It's the same length, same height. It's about what you can get. Um, the other thing you need to look at when you're driving one is parking one. This is a beast. These things are huge. You want them to be though, because you want the room. Parking one of these may require you to park in the last parking spot at Walmart instead of the first one. It's just how maneuverable they are. The Chevy is going to be a little bit more because it's shorter. The mid, uh, the low roof Ford, it's shorter. It'll be easier to park. The Mercedes, the high roof Fords, they're longer chassis, so they're harder to get into that parking spot. Most of these, I'm going to exclude the Chevy this time. The Ford and the Mercedes have a surround sound or a surround view camera system. Backing them up is simple. It's awesome. They're easy to drive. They drive better than my truck. 
as far as backing them up because you can see all the way around you. Chevy, on the other hand, only puts one camera in the back. It's an awesome feature. It makes it great for backing up, but you, you don't see the sides. But the Chevy's shorter, low top. You can see the sides in your mirror. So there's different features between the brands. You just need to do your research and find out what features you have to have and what features you can do away with. So we've talked about all three of our vans here, Mercedes, Ford, Chevys. Uh, we don't have any of the Dodge, the Ram Sprinters. Haven't gotten into that yet. Basic knowledge. I mean, basic things of what I talked about here relates over to those. So we've had a couple other videos already posted. Brody discussed some things with y'all. Hunter discussed some interior packages with y'all. Y'all will see me in a later video discuss about some fun accessories. Hey everyone, this is Daniel with Better Outfitters. We're here to discuss the fun side of your camping build. We're gonna discuss the accessories, the aftermarket bumpers, hitches, awnings, auxiliary lighting, the fun personalized customization that you personally can do to your van to make it your own. So first, what we're gonna start off with is this wonderful thing above me. There's tons of different awnings. You have, this is a Fiamma. It's an auto retract. You just crank it out, crank it back in, drop a couple of legs, it's good to go. You also have Easy On, 23-0. There's tons of brands out there. You have the straight fold outs that just roll out. You set your legs down, you put some bars in. They're kind of smaller. You can get up to the 180 degree which folds out to your side, gives you 180 degree of shade. You can do a 270 if your van's set up just right. The options are crazy with these things. You can do wall sets. You could turn your awning into an entire tent outside of your van. It all depends on what you want, what you're going to use it for. This little guy right here comes with this van, the Chevy van. Right now, you have a perfect camp kitchen set up out here. You have shade for the middle of the day. Here in Texas, it's 8.30, 8.45 in the morning, and I'm already getting hot. It's nasty out here, guys. And in Dallas, your, your heat index is 107. Everyone in McKinney is dead. So this gives you the protection from the sun. So when looking at an awning, you wanna look at what you're gonna use it for, what accessories it can get that you want. If you want a wall kit, the Fiamma might not be the one for you. If you want as much coverage as you can, the Fiamma's not going to be it, the 270 Whitley. It all depends on your personal want and need. All right, guys, we're up here in the front of the Chevy van here. So looking at this bumper, this is a Weld Tech bumper. Crazy stability. These things are built to hit some stuff and run over stuff. If not that you're going to want to drive into something. But this particular bumper has the high cut sides, which gives you more travel on the off-road terrain that you may take your van without your tire, you know, running into the bottom of the bumper. This one also has the winch mount. You may want a winch. That's another accessory to look at. If you're gonna do some serious off-roading, a good winch is always something you're probably gonna need. It also has the light mounts. You could put huge auxiliary lighting, which I'll get to here in a little bit. It has your shackle mounts. For if you did get yourself in one of those nasty spots, you've got the mount to hook up to to get yourself out. This is one version on the Chevy van. They offer other ones. This is one we chose, gave the best styling to the van. All right guys, so we checked out the Chevy. We're over here at the Ford. So Ford, I'm sure you all know this, and they do it for a reason. The factory Ford bumper is plastic, has a very small little minor strip of metal that's considered the bumper. The rest of it's just fancy fascia, pretty stuff. So we decided we were gonna take that stuff off and make it a little bit more beefy. So what we have here is the Illuminous bumpers. Illuminous is an all aluminum bumper. It has a metal tray, a steel tray that bolts to the vehicle, but the outer shell is aluminum. That way you still keep the weight off, but you get more durability. Looking at this bumper, it has the little bull bar that connect or that hooks up to cover the grill, protect your grill. Shockingly, guys, this bumper actually has a place for a winch. 
So your winch system actually will mount down in the bottom, but your winch will come out right here. It mounts up underneath into that steel tray I was talking about. So it's fully hooked into your frame. If you needed to winch your van out, you don't have to worry about flex or pulls or twists. It'll handle it. It also comes with the options for more auxiliary lighting. Here again, I'll get to that. This bumper itself, the way that it's cut on the bottom gives you a little bit more ground clearance than what the factory does. So, off-road guys, that means you can run over more stuff getting crazier terrain without damaging your bumper. It also has, the way that this bar is designed, your camera system will still function. It does not block any of the front camera. So, now to the little piece that I was talking about. The Ford Transits come with a deal called Adaptive Cruise. Also comes with four collision alert, which are awesome safety features, guys. So that's a sensor that is mounted into your factory bumper. The guys at Illuminus have designed it. That way that sensor goes inside this plate and is protected by that shield. All of your safety features still function. They still work. That is a huge plus. So looking at this bumper, looking at the other bumper, they're both rugged bumpers. They both do what they need to. This one, the Transit wasn't designed like the Chevy. The Chevy's a powerhouse, guys. The Transit's more of your mid-class. It's not going to get crazy and, you know, do the big rock crawling. But with this bumper on there, if you're driving down back roads like here in Texas, you see a hog, you don't have to worry about half of your vehicle disappearing because it's plastic. So now from here, we're going to move on to the back of the vehicles. We're going to check out the rear bumpers, the racks. We're going to check out more of the accessory side. So come on over this way. Not only do we have a bumper to look at, but we also have options for the bumpers. So on this particular van, this is the model bumper that matches the front that we chose, the Weldtex. They have swing outs. So you're going off road, you're going to want a spare. So the spare tire won't fit under the van. We went to bigger tires. Another thing we're gonna get to on this video. That won't fit, so you gotta put it somewhere. So we stuck it on this bumper. It's got an awesome rack design for it. It swings out, out of your way. And then it has multiple spots where it'll latch itself. So with this swung out, you can see how beefy this thing is. I mean, that's heavy duty pipe. The actual pivot system has actual trailer axle bearings in it. That way this thing swings and can handle tremendous amounts of weight. But once it's swung open, then you can open up your back doors. You could get into the rear of your van. So this side is your spare tire. Now this is only on the Chevys guys. This side, when it swings open, just like the other side, it has the same pins. But on this particular side, there's boxes. You can get aluminum boxes, you can get steel boxes. There's other rack or other mounting options for this plate. So here you can add a box and you can have tons of storage here. So these rear bumpers are not just for protection, they're actually awesome as far as the upgrades you can do to it. Now on our Ford van, which we're fixing to walk over and take a look at, it has racks on the back. The bumpers and things we've chose for this van does not come with those, but there are options out there for them. So let's go check out the Ford, see what we can figure out on it. All right guys, so we're over here at our transit. Looking at the back of this, as you can tell, it's completely different. The rear bumper actually stayed on the transit. We did not do the bumper swap on it. There's some other options you can do. We just chose not to because the bed liner, rhino liner look that wraps all the way around the van looks awesome on that bumper. So we'll start with the driver's side rack. On this rack, you have your ladder. You have a spare tire mount. Once again, the spare tire won't fit underneath because we went to a larger tire. So we chose to do this rack. It also has these nifty little guys, because if you're like me, I installed this and I'm like, that ladder is absolutely pointless right now because the tire's in my way. Luminous thought that through. So they send you these three little steps to where you can climb up these and get to your rung to go up on the roof. 
super convenient, super out of the way. You're never going to hit yourself on those things. So also comes with load bars down here to help handle the weight of the spare. Another safety option. This all bolts into your hinge plates. That is another nice thing. There is no drilling, no welding, no tearing up the vehicle in any way. You literally undo factory bolts, put your brackets on, put your factory bolts on. So we're going to move to the passenger side. Over here, guys, this is what they call the backpack rack. Tons of options. You can get a full plate that has a bunch of holes for max tracks, uh, boxes, storage totes, tons of stuff. On this rack, here again, it all bolts into the factory spots. Now I'm, I'm gonna open the door so we can get a glimpse of how it bolts in. But the other thing with this, compared to the Chevy, I don't have any trays I have to swing out. You literally reach through and your door opens. So it's a little bit more convenient. So looking at this, this is one set of brackets. They go to your factory handle. Your other bracket goes to the factory door lock. No drilling guys, super easy. The interior brackets, like I said, bolt into the same thing. And here again, your door opens. There's no swing out trays, very convenient. Same bracketing, top and bottom right over the factory hinges super easy to install Illuminus has really thought their products through when it comes to that there's numerous companies that make aftermarket leds try to stick with your leds they draw less voltage they draw they have less heat and they give you more light you can get leds at 10,000 lumens 12,000 lumens some of your bigger companies like rigid uh kcs they get higher on their lumens so when you're picking out auxiliary lighting think about what you're going to want it to do you either want it driving which they make driving lights it's a combination of beams beams is how the lights projected so you'll have on a driving light you'll have a spot beam as well as a flood beam. If you're wanting light out under your awning, you'll put you a little light up here or a light over there, and it'll give you a flood of light to cover all the areas that you may be walking in at night. Auxiliary lighting on vans though can go crazy. You can go sky's the limit. You could do bumpers. You can do racks on your tops that hold numerous lights. There's other lights that you can get called pinch weld lights. They'll go in little areas like this just small lights for this area. You could do rear lighting for if you were trying to back up, it comes on and lights up the countryside. Auxiliary lighting is one of those, in my opinion, you could do too much, but it's really difficult to get to that spot. I think most of the time, if you get it to where you're comfortable with it, that's all that matters. So from this point, we're gonna move on to our wheels and tires and our lift kits. you're building this van out you're going to probably take it off road that's the whole purpose of these if you're going to be traveling a lot of highway and occasionally see some dirt some mud some you know off road a mud grip is probably not what you're going to want with that being said though if you're going to be the other guy that your van's only going to see the pavement maybe a quarter of the time and it's going to see the trail you might want a mud grip you never know. You got to consider your personal style of what you're going to do with the van. This guy, we've used all-terrain tires. This is our Chevy. We did an aggressive wheel package, which not only can handle the oversized tires, they also look better than the factories. Anybody that has really looked at that knows what I'm talking about. Factory didn't give it a whole lot of style. These give it your personal style because there's tons of options out there. We used a BF Goodridge all-terrain tire. It's got a heavy-duty sidewall, it's got a heavy-duty tread, and it's got a pretty aggressive tread pattern. With all that combined, what I'm saying is this tire right here can go down the highway and it doesn't make that growling, roary air sound like a heavy-duty mud grip would. But if you hit the trail and you get into some sloshy mud, it cleans out. It doesn't cake up with mud. So that's an option to look at. Now for us, we've done lift kits. On our lift kits, you can do some crazy lifts. 
You can do up on the Chevy vans, you can do six inch lift kits. You can house 33 to 35 inch tires. I'm getting to the point where I'm lazy. The higher you go, the bigger the tire you get, looks awesome. I don't like having to climb to get in the thing. That's me personally, here again. This is a personal thing. You have to make this van yours. So with the certain situations, some vans don't even require a lift to get a nice beefy tire like this. Other vans do. Our transits all have two inch lifts because they're all wheel drive. That two inch lift gives you the ground clearance and gives you the option to be able to put bigger tires. Bigger tires means a little bit more ground clearance as well. So for the off-road guys, the lift, the bigger tires, the aggressive tires gives you the option to be able to hit the trail and not worry about dragging everything under your vehicle. The guys that are building the, these bad boys out to take off down the highway and maybe do state park tour, the aggressive tires, the lift kit may not be your, your cup of tea, but it is an option when you get ready to do your van. So it's always something to look at, go through your needs and go through your wants. After all that's done and you have it all written down, go through your budget. Make sure that what's priority. For me, the lift kit wouldn't be priority. Lighting probably would be. For you, other things are gonna be priority. Always do this, like our videos have been discussing, to customize and make the van for you. All right, guys, thanks for watching our camper van buying guide. We appreciate you spending the time to actually investigate. If you have any questions, please give us a call. We're Better Outfitters. You can go on our website, check out more products, more stuff for these vans. If you want help trying to build out your van, please shout out to me or Brody. Like, comment, subscribe. We'll see you next time.